of thousands of these workers are brought across the border from Mexico every year. They are given a quickie physical examination at El Centro, then sent to work on big farms in the Imperial Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, the Salinas Valley, the Santa Clara Valley. They work mostly for big farmers who call themselves growers, although they personally grow and harvest only profits. Before World War II, most of the workers in California's fields were domestic agricultural laborers, following the crops every year. During the war, a farm labor shortage developed. Mexican workers were brought in to meet the emergency. Then the war ended. The emergency was over. But the employers knew a good thing when they saw one. They decided to keep on importing braceros from Mexico under agreements between the U.S. and Mexican governments. Now they prefer Mexican nationals to domestic labor. Not because of some sentimental attachment for Mexican food or Mexican culture or Mexican music, nor because of any real shortage of domestic American labor. It is because a big supply of imported Mexican labor forces down the real wages of American farm workers. It is because an endless supply of destitute contract labor means more profits for the owners of California's rich soil and guarantees them against organization of these workers into unions. Teamsters in California make about $3 an hour. Carpenters make about $3.25. The common labor rate is about $2.80. These workers need every cent they earn to meet the ever-rising cost of living. But what do you think agricultural workers make? 70 to 85 cents an hour on the average for field labor. About $1 to a dollar and a quarter an hour for machine labor. Often it is much less. These are the going rates for farm workers. Each year, the number of contract workers or braceros brought in from Mexico increases until it now reaches more than 150,000 a year in California. They live in barracks, housing as many as 2,000 men. Any bracero who complains about wages or conditions can be sent back to Mexico on the next bus. And he sometimes is. The bracero is supposed to get the prevailing wage paid domestic labor. But this isn't the way it works. The wealthy landowners set the prevailing wage on a take-it-or-leave-it basis through their powerful associations. Then they demand and get approval to contract for as many braceros as they want. They order more than they need, enough to force real wages down, enough so that they don't have to hire domestic workers except on their own terms. No wonder the owners of California's farm factories like this system. No wonder they squawk whenever it's proposed to limit the importation of braceros, or whenever it's proposed to organize farm workers into unions, or to improve the conditions of these workers by protective legislation. These Mexican workers picking tomatoes are paid less than was paid ten years ago. They are paid about a third of what industrial workers get for their labor. Their wage is determined not by a traditional small farmer employing an occasional hired man. It is paid by a Bank of America farmer, by big business enterprises that control most of the tomato production and market their product under the name of Del Monte, Van Camp, Campbell, Hunter Hines. That wage is paid for hard work, for backbreaking work in the hot sun, it is paid by employers owning huge farms, hiring hundreds or thousands of workers during the season, and quite able to pay the same wage other industries pay for their labor. Make no mistake about it, growing tomatoes is big business in California, a $107 million a year business, and it is tied up with the even bigger tomato canning business. In fact, tomato growing, packing and canning is controlled by the same corporate farm interests. It is, of course, a highly profitable business when labor can be hired for 70 cents an hour instead of the two or three dollars an hour prevailing in other industries. Did somebody mention the family size farm? Small farmers can't afford expensive machinery. They can't buy conveyor belt equipment and have it installed in the fields. And the business interests that can't afford to pay for these machines 
can also afford to pay a living wage to the workers in the factories and the fields, to the workers who produce more than half the tomatoes grown in the entire United States.